Hello everyone, I'm Jean Marcos from That's Brilliant, and in this video we're going to continue the derivatives of the trigonometric functions. So we have already proved the derivatives of the sine, cosine, and tangent, and I'm gonna uh, I'm going to put the link of those videos in the description below. And uh, as I said in the previous video, in the derivative of the tangent function, the, the, these functions, uh, the, these derivatives. Uh, these proofs that we are having in this video and in the next ones, they are very similar to the proofs we have had we had in the previous videos. So uh, I am I'm going to to go a little bit quicker through the proof because I don't I don't want to be very repetitive. Because as I said, the proofs are very similar. But if you have any questions, comment them below, and I would recommend watching the the previous videos. So uh, let's start with the proof. We're going to start off in the same way, the definition of the derivative. So we have a function f of x, f prime of x, which is the derivative of this function, is the limit when h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And uh, in this video we're going to have, as I said, it's written here, it's the derivative of the secant. So, uh, f of x in this video is going to be secant of x because secant, secant is uh, what uh, secant is the function whose derivative we're, we are trying to prove. So f of x is the secant of x. So f prime of x, the derivative of sine of x, is the limit when h approaches zero of the secant of x plus h minus secant of x divided by h. Now remember what what is secant? Secant is the is is the is the reciprocal function of the cosine. So secant is uh, secant of x is one over cosine of x. So secant is the reciprocal of cosine of x. So, we're going to, to apply this here. This is going to be equal to the limit when h approaches 0. And secant of x plus h is 1 over cosine of x plus h. Because secant of x is the reciprocal of cosine of x. Reciprocal means it's 1 over that thing. So, secant is 1 over cosine of x. It's the definition of secant. So, secant of x plus h is 1 over the cosine of x plus h. Secant of x is going to be 1 over the cosine of x. And all of this divided by h. And this is equal to. We're going to do the least common factor here. So, as we did in the previous video, forget for a moment about h. So, this is going to be the limit when h approaches 0 of. The, the, the least common factor between cosine of x plus h and cosine of, of x is these two things multiplied together. So the, the least common factor is the cosine of x plus h times the cosine of x. This is the least common factor between these two uh, factors here, between these two things. And um, what, what do we have in the numerator of this, of this fraction? So cosine of x plus h times cosine of x divided by the cosine of x plus h is cosine of x times 1 cosine of x minus then we do this divided by cosine of x we are left with cosine of x plus h and then times 1 cosine of x plus h we have just uh, applied the least common factor and now we can remember about h we just forgot about h because we we are just doing the, the least common factor. We would have everything divided by h, but uh, a more simplified way is just doing h times all of this, which is the same thing. So, this is equal to... Now, we are going to remember uh, a, a sum to product formula of trigonometry. It's a, a, a factorization equation we can use when you have the subtraction between two cosines. So we have already used this equation when we, when we proved the derivative of the cosine of x. The, 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 let me use another color. The equation is when you have cosine of a 
minus cosine of b, we have the, the difference between two cosines. We want to, tra to, to transform this into a product. So this is equal to the negative, it is equal to negative 2 times the sine of a plus b over 2 times the sine of a minus b over 2. We have already used this equation, as I said. And we're going to use that same thing here. We have a cosine minus another cosine. So, let's call x of a. In this case, x is a. And x plus h is b. So, this is equal to the limit when h approaches 0 of. As I said, we're going from this to this. So, this is going to be negative 2 times the sine of a plus b. a is x, b is x plus h. x plus x plus h is 2x, 2x plus h. This is the a plus b. Then we have the divided by 2. And then sine times sine of a minus b. a is x, b is x uh, plus h. So, let's do it here. Um, x minus x plus h. It's going to be x minus x minus h. So, a minus b is negative h. So, negative h and then the over 2. Over 2. Um, yeah, over 2. And then all of this divided by h times cosine of x plus h times the cosine of x. Now we're going to manipulate this, this, this thing so we can um, simplify this whole mess here. So, first thing, let's remember that sine of x is an odd function. So, sine of x is odd. And what it means to be an odd function? If g of x is odd, is an odd function, it, it, it means that g of negative x is equal to negative g of x. So we are going to apply this here because sine is, is a non function. So it's we can think we can think of this uh, this way. Sine of negative h over two is negative sine of h over two. It's just like uh, if we are getting this negative sine out of the sine. So we're getting this negative sine out of the sine function. So we have a negative sign that's going out of the, the sine function and we already have another negative sign. So everything becomes positive. Another, another thing we can do, divide both the numerator and the denominator by two. The, it's going to remain the same thing, but we're going to, to simplify, uh, we're going to manipulate this expression as we, as we want. So we can divide the, the, the numerator by two so 2 divided by 2 cancels out. And then the denominator divided by 2. So h over 2. Why did you do why did we do this? Because now we have sine of h over 2 and h over 2. And this is very similar to a property of trigonometry that we know. And you have already used it, that property. So we're going to do this. Consider sine of h over 2 and h over 2 as one thing. And the rest as a second thing. We have the limit of two things multiplied. This is equal to the limit of the first thing times the limit of the second thing. This is another property of limits that we have already used. So this is going to be the limit when h approaches 0 of first thing. So sine of h over 2 divided by h over 2. And then times the limit h approaches 0 of. And the second thing is what is left without the, the, the green, out of the green uh, rectangles. So, sine of 2x plus h over 2 and divided by all of this. And divided by the cosine of x plus h times the cosine of x. And remember that this first limit here 
this is equal to 1. Okay, because we, we have a limit that says, uh, a very important limit in trigonometry that says, the limit when, a, when x approaches 0 of sine of x over x, this is 1. Uh, and you can say, oh, we should have a divided by 2 here. Yeah, it's the same thing. When h approaches 0, h over 2 also approaches 0. So it's the same thing. This is also a... There, there is another video, if I'm not mistaken, it, it is the derivative of the cosine that we had the same limit and uh, I proved with more detail that this is 1. If I'm not mistaken, it's the cosine video. I'm going to put an annotation in the video uh, telling uh, you which video it is that we proved this limit with a little bit of more detail. But as I said, it's pretty much it. It's pretty much this. When h approaches 0, h over 2 also approaches 0. So this limit is 1. Now we have this other limit. And now we can already see uh, what the function, what this whole thing approaches when h approaches 0. So when h gets closer and closer to 0, this whole function gets closer and closer to sine. When h gets closer to 0, this is sine of 2x over 2 divided by the cosine of x times cosine of x. And this is sine of x. 2 cancels out the, the divided by 2. Divided by cosine of x times cosine of x is cosine squared of x. This is, uh, if you want, you can just split one cosine. Uh, this is equal to the tangent of x times the secant of x. Why is that? So, we, 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 you can call the sine over cosine of tangent and the one over, over cosine is secant. And it's the same thing here. We have sine over cosine, which is tangent, and then one over cosine, which is secant. So this is it. We have proved that the derivative of, of secant of x is equal to tangent of x and secant of x. And uh, we have already proved four uh, we have already proved the derivatives of four trigonometric functions. So again, any questions, don't hesitate to comment them below. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.